Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. Good to have you all here in worship today. Uh, nothing in the way of uh, worship uh, announcements that I have other than um, immediately following the service. I will be um, heading over to Cloquet Presbyterian to do a little bit of guest preaching, a little meet and greet. Uh, since we have such a relationship with them, I thought it would be a good opportunity to say hello. So, just so you know, I'm not being antisocial. I will not be joining you for fellowship hour. I'll be heading over uh, to the Presbyterian Church to, to greet our uh, neighbors in Christ uh, over there. Uh, so, seeing no other uh, announcements, uh, do we have any children out there for the message before we head into our Sparks Bible Town? And a couple of So, I've got a couple questions for you today. So, I was at the, at the grocery store and I picked up a, uh, a pack of Whole Bean Duluth Coffee Company uh, coffee beans to make coffee with. How much do you think that costs? Hmm? Four or five dollars? What do you think? A gallon of organic milk, one percent. How much do you think that costs? Twelve ninety. Okay. Four dollars. Okay. In the middle, six fifty nine. Right. So when you go to the grocery store, you're used to certain items costing certain things, right? There's a little price tag right there. You know, the bananas might be like you know, 56 cents a pound or something like that. If you go to the gas station, it's $2 and, you know, uh, 80 cents for a gallon or something like that. Um, so a lot of things have a price tag with them, right? So I was thinking, uh, how much does happiness cost? None? Say about that. Got that? It's free because you get to pick if you're happy or not. Yeah, it, exactly. Um, in the text today, we're going to be talking a lot um, about uh, the, the role that money and possessions have in our lives. And we need things, and um, we are happier when we have our needs provided for us, so we have food and clothing um, and a place to live. Uh, and usually some things uh, for entertainment and uh, But it's important to uh, remember that those things are what make us happy, right? It's, um, it's an attitude. It's being in the relationship with people. It's fun to have things like toys, like, uh, like a video game system, or to have bikes and things like that. But it's, it's more fun when we can do those things with other people and share it um, with other people. And so uh, those relationships, those friendships, um, are the things that matter more than just stuff. So um, I don't really put a price tag on, on stuff. You can get, keep getting more and more and more and more stuff, but if you don't have anyone to share it with, it's not much good. Uh, let's Dear God, Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us people who are a reflection of that love in our lives. Help us to focus on them and the things that truly matter in life, and not just um, our stuff and our possessions. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Thanks for coming up. Are you guys heading to, heading to Sparks? Now? Okay. We'll just do the Jonas. 
We'll continue with the confession and forgiveness that's printed in your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. We begin this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, you will us, and you us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for our gathering hymn. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, 858 in your red hymn.
be with you all. I'll also be with you. Please join me in singing together, period, and followed by the camp of grace.
who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oil, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 146. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. I praise the Lord as long as I live. trust in rulers, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who give justice to those who are oppressed, and full of food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are well down. The Lord loves righteousness. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall bring me forever. Until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather of God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise as you are able and join me in singing the gospel act acclamation.
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is, uh, is a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob, faltered Scrooge, who now began to apply it. Business, cried the ghost, wringing his hands again. Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Now, I usually loathe to bring up anything Christmas-related before Thanksgiving, much less Halloween. But in my preparation for today, I could think of little else. The Gospel text before us today reminded me of this famous scene from Dickens' classic work, A Christmas Carol. In it, the miserly, heartless character of Ebenezer Scrooge is confronted by the ghost of his long-dead business partner, Jacob Marley who is trying to convince Scrooge to change his ways. You see, in life, Marley had also been a cold and heartless businessman, and upon his death was cursed to wander and eternally regret his misdeeds as a restless spirit in punishment for his cruelness in life. And the rich man finds himself in a similar position in today's Gospel. He didn't notice or chose to ignore the plight of Lazarus, a hungry, sore riddled man lying at his gate. The rich man was too wrapped up in his business, his mansion, his fortune, his image, to bother with the business of compassion, of helping the weak and the hurting. So much so that at the time of his death, he found himself in hell. The rich man came to realize, as Jacob Marley that his callous and unfeeling attitudes and actions in life had sealed his gruesome fate in death. Yet, unlike Marley, he could not leave. He had no chance to warn his brothers, his family, his friends. 
You see, the man feared that his brothers would ignore the teachings of the prophets as he had. Prophets like Amos, who declares to us today in our Old Testament reading. Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the stall. Who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and, like David, improvise on instruments of music. Who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The man longed for escape, escape from the agony and eternal regret. But he receives a chilling reply. Remember that during your lifetime, received your good things. And I don't know about you, but these are pretty chilling words for us as well. We rack our brains and think over our own lives. I'm surely not that rich man, am I? I haven't ignored the Bible's teachings on compassion and mercy. Have I? I've been a good enough person, right? I won't be going to hell, will I? They're chilling words because I think if we are honest with ourselves, we find that our actions and thoughts all too often miss the mark. We pretend not to notice suffering or injustice, or maybe try to rationalize or to victim blame. We may not be as heartless or cruel as Scrooge or this rich man, but we all have a measure of guilt in matters of injustice and suffering, directly or indirectly. Humankind is our business, and we've done a poor job of seeing the task through. But I think we ought to be careful. This is more than a simple morality play. I don't think it's simply a checklist or helpful tips on how to get to heaven. Such a thing is certainly at odds with a Christian understanding of unmerited grace. I think there's more going on. During my chaplain internship at Southdale Hospital in Edina, I met a man named Robert. He was um, crusty, crotchety, and a man in his mid, uh, mid 80s. He was a staunch Catholic and was a little wary of a Protestant chaplain coming to visit him, much less a student chaplain. After I told him, he would have to wait for some time for the Catholic priest who split his time between two hospitals in town. Robert reluctantly agreed that it would be all right if we talked for a while. You know, I honestly don't remember what he was suffering from exactly. But I remember his legs. I remember the large, ugly sores that covered his legs. And after the usual conversation of trivial pleasantries, where do we live, where is our family, all that sort of thing, the conversation turned toward his condition. He said that the sores on his legs were extremely painful, almost unbearable. As he went on, I was fumbling, seeking to muster up some words of sympathy and comfort. When he did something I didn't expect. He locked his eyes on mine and pointed to his legs and said in a strained but emphatic voice, 
These wounds remind me of Christ's wounds, of what God did for me on the cross. I am in pain like Jesus was. We share it. He knows what it's like. I think this text from Luke is more than a story about good people going to heaven and bad people going to hell. To read it this way would be to miss the underlying point. Throughout Luke's gospel, there is an emphasis placed on Jesus' compassion for the least of these, the poor, the hungry, the broken, and the lost. As the psalmist puts it today, God is the one who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are, are bowed down. That is to say that God's power, that God's kingdom comes not through riches, prestige, and domination, but in weakness, brokenness, and suffering. God's power is made known and most clearly demonstrated, demonstrated in suffering with us, grieving with us, in being God with us. And not just as some fair-weathered friend, but one who walks with us always, even in that great chasm, the valley of the shadow of death. We can know and believe this because of the cross. A sign of utter foolishness and weakness to the world, but also the ultimate demonstration of God's grace and unwavering commitment to the creation he loves so much. And to each one. This text is a reminder of that promise that God sides with us when we are suffering and hurting. And it is also a call to share the beauty of that promise with those who are hurting around us. To grieve with others, to sit in the ashes and to pray with them. To the God who knows what it is like to be rejected, to suffer, to die. <laughs> That, brothers and sisters, in Christ is our business. That is where God's power is made known. That is where God's grace begins. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
sustained and nurtured by our generous God, we gather as one to pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Faithful Lord, you call your church to serve. Free your people from the deceptions of false masters, so that we discover the true richness of serving in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Creating you, you have made all kinds of creatures protect animals in the midst of seasonal migration, whether by water, through air, or over land. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, you reign over the nations. When the powerful trample on the needy and take advantage of the poor, turn them from their selfish ways. Show us your way of truth that leads to justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. He laid down. You raise up those who have been bowed down, and you remember those who are forgotten. We lift up to you all who are in this day, especially Anita, Betty Jane, Joe, Joyce, Alice, Lily, Dorothy, Randy, Mildred, Marge, Jackie, Dwayne, Tom, Leah, Jackie, Linda, all those that are prayer list and those we now name aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Grant them joy and comfort in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, you who hold us close even in death, we lift to you our thanks for those who have recently died and are now at rest with you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Assured by your promise to heal us, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Please take time to share that piece with those. We'll now continue with the morning.
rise as you are able and join in singing the offertory number 188. Are not yet ready to commune. 
Um, if you're more comfortable, you can come with your hands folded in front of you to receive a blessing, but know that all gathered here today, visitors included, are welcome to partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. Come taste and see.
Please stand as you're ready. May the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and the blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated for the mission and ministry of the Well, I have a few if nobody else does. Uh, first of all, um, Dr. Vicki wanted to uh, remind everyone that if you have apples in the church fridge, um, they will be cleared out for the meatball supper coming up this week, so make sure to grab them today if you haven't yet. Uh, they're uh, back in the, the fridge in the kitchen, so make sure to grab those um, as well. And speaking of Dr. Vicki, thank you so much for uh, providing the, the music uh, this morning and uh, filling in while Gretchen is away. Uh, it's lovely to have such a lovely organ get uh, good use and be played so well, so thank you. Uh, for sharing your talents today. Um, also, um, as I mentioned uh, previously, we have our meatball uh, supper uh, coming up uh, this week. We still have tickets um, on sale, and I think you can buy them at the door. That is okay, too. Um, but uh, make sure to um, purchase them for yourself and your friends and family, and um, I'm looking forward to being a part of it. It'll be the first one that I have experienced since being here, so that, um, that is coming up uh, as well. Uh, also, uh, behind me here uh, on the altar is a uh, floral arrangement. We had a non-member funeral here um, on Wednesday um, for Lynn Smith went by uh, Smitty, I guess, and um, wonderful um, service, a great time of remembrance, so the uh, flowers were left um, on the altar in memory of him. So we um, thank his uh, family and friends for gracing our sanctuary uh, this morning. I think that's all that I have. Did someone want to say something about the community garden meal on, uh, on Wednesday? Looking at Since he put me on the spot, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we have a community garden meal this week also, the day after the meatball supper. So you can feast two days in a row. Uh, the potluck is, yes, bring a dish to share. We've had a bountiful garden this summer uh, with a lot of community participation as well as uh, member participation. So feel you're welcome to come and share the feast. Thank you. I forgot also to mention, uh, you may have seen it in the newsletter, uh, beginning this Thursday um, from uh, 9 to 11 on Thursday mornings, uh, I will be holding office hours at the Warming House here in uh, Cloquet. Just an opportunity for me to get off site, to meet people in a different setting, maybe interact with people who aren't as comfortable in a traditional church setting. But uh, it isn't just for them, so if you see me out and um, out while you're out and about and aren't too embarrassed by uh, seeing your pastor out in public, uh, stop by and say hello. Um, I'll have a, a book and some work with me, but always happy to have a diversion. So just know that uh, that is beginning uh, this Thursday. Uh, those are all the announcements I have at this time, so invite uh, the kids forward to come grab an instrument over to the side here and get ready to accompany our final song and also invite the congregation to stand as you're able for our benediction.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close with our sending him to be your presence. Five, four, six, and you're ready. Go out to 